that scene in the grocery store. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? You remember the scene in the grocery store? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, watch this. <laughs> Yeah, in the middle of the store, <laughs> and the day is—is is he shopping? <laughs> like, like if you, you see what I'm saying? Hey man, it might have been a Wednesday, and they had specials on that day. Yeah, they take the costume off first. <laughs> like, if you angle it the right way, is he? Does he have a basket? <laughs> right. He might. It would have been great if he is does. he like buying toilet paper and knives. <laughs> you know, just, man, those stakeouts like, with uh, that, Billy take that time. That is in the grocery store in the daytime <laughs> in his ghost face costume. Hey everyone, Double Toasted Live is heading to Florida for two back-to-back -back shows. Gonna be in Miami Thursday, January 20th, and then in Orlando Friday, January 21st. Get your tickets now by going to x1entertainment.com. Super VIP and VIP tickets available right now. And when you do go to get your tickets, we have a very special discount for you for a limited time only. Type in the code DT2022 when you go to x1entertainment.com and get 15% off your ticket price. Also, check out a new merch store at tpublic.com. We have new merch and new designs available right now with many more on the way. Check them out by clicking the link in the description below. So, you know, uh, with Scream, man, they, they it, it was really groundbreaking for just the meta nature of the whole sure. thing. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, uh... Wes Craven, as we were talking about earlier, man, he brought he brought back a certain subgenre of horror, kind of reinvigorated horror in general when Scream came out. Uh, and it's not the first time that he had tried to go in because when you do look, when you create Freddy Krueger, like you ain't going back to just do average horror shit, all right? You're gonna you're gonna continue to try to break ground, and he did try to do that with Freddy Krueger himself. With what is it? Uh, new West, nightmare. West Craven's new nightmare. What happens when the story dies? The evil is set free. Right, Wes? It's kind of crossover out of films into our reality. Oh, Freddy! Freddy's in the real world now. <laughs> meta. It's getting meta. Meta, is meta Freddy. Freddy. Me <laughs> meta Krueger. Yes. Is over here. This is where Freddy Krueger. They had, the, look, this is just another reason that, like, it was funny because a lot of people saw through this shit because they were like, oh, my God, Freddy, Freddy's back, but he's just not a character in a movie. Freddy's crossed over into the real world. If we want to hold him back, we got to make more movies. <laughs> if he oh, like, oh, that's, oh, that's the premise, oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Get out of here with that, man. You just trying to, this is a commercial, a crummy commercial for more Freddy Krueger movies? <laughs> A lot of people said cool concept but i this is too smart <laughs> this too is, smart yeah i ain't here to go to no film school all right because what happened here is that critics loved it yes critics loved it you know the reason why is because not only were they trying to like restart the franchise by bringing freddie back into the real world and making new movies but also uh, this was a critique of Hollywood, mm -hmm. the natures of sequels, the, na the nature of franchises. So, you know, mm. this is a, that's why critics loved it, because it was an egghead film critic, film nerd movie. <laughs> Too academic for the mainstream audiences is what you could probably say. However, Scream in 1996, Scream was a lesson learned from Wes Craven's new nightmare. This is something where... Wes Craven said, you know what, instead of trying to go too deep with this meta commentary about the nature of Hollywood, let's just take it back to the audiences and give them what they want. You can examine the horror genre, especially a sub-genre of that, while also never losing sight of doing what you're supposed to do with a horror movie, scare people. Hello? Hey. Why do you want to know my name? I want to know who I'm looking at. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you all smiles before. Yeah. <laughs> oh, who's this hot guy? You were indulging him. Yeah. Right. Wait, should, where, what do you do? You should stay on the phone a long time ago. That's what, that's what you get, Drew Barrymore. Someone is playing a deadly game. Never, ever, ever, under any circumstances, say, "I'll be right back." I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, folks, this is also a comedy that we mentioned that. Uh, but the thing with this, man, is that this did speak more to the mainstream. It wasn't too talky. It wasn't 
too it wasn't too meta you know they weren't going into too many commentaries about the nature of film in hollywood no this was a movie that put being a horror movie first but then being a very smart commentary on the horror genre itself and it did so by bringing in the subgenre of the teen slasher flick something that was just kind of dead at that time when it came out was it yeah, yeah. the big franchise <clears throat> were done you know just to add on to what you were saying about uh, nightmare on elm street before i mean another reason why that film didn't perform well because the, the previous movie was freddy's dead it's yes. over yes. Oh, and so right. we were like you brought him back again give me a break and so yeah all these big franchises were on the way out or they're going to direct to dvd or that kind of thing yeah yeah so this kind of just you know, didn't really bring back Freddy Krueger like they wanted, but they did bring back horror in a way. And the teen slasher horror genre was uh, something that was just, yeah, it was... Uh, revitalized. Yeah, it was revitalized by this. Instead of going over people's heads talking about Hollywood, which, which uh, you know, most people, they don't care about the business of Hollywood, but they do know about the tropes of horror. They do know about the rules of the teen slasher flick. And that is why Scream was able to bring that genre back to life. I like to talk to y'all about what really scares me. Okay. Post office. Every time I go to the post office, I get a horrible sense of dread. <laughs> I got some horror stories. <laughs> if Wes Craven was still alive, I'd tell I'd have him make movies about my experiences with the post office. My mother sent something to me the other day. Uh, about, no, about a month ago. I left a credit card in Waco, Ooh, right. and she tried to mail it to me. <laughs> and then once she maxed it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I missed the, 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 the mailman when he came here, so I had to go to the post office to get it. I went there twice. Line was out the door for yeah. where I had to go and get my package. Mm -hmm. Finally, I just said, send it back on my mom. I'll go get it. Next time I'm in Waco, I'll get it there. If you like me, people, and you cannot, first of all, you don't like lines, period, at all. But you really hate. Sometimes you are horrified by the lines at the post office. You just went through it over the holidays. Why are you putting yourself through that? Don't do that anymore. You're living in a modern age. And for those people out there, you know, I'm talking to the casuals. But if you're a small business owner, you owe it to yourself to go over to stamps.com. You know, stamp dot com stamps dot com saves you time and money which means i mean in a way you're kind of helping your mentality right here <laughs> sure <laughs> you know they've been around for 20 years and they have been indispensable for over 1 million businesses out there big and large I mean, I'm so big and large, just like a rap group. <laughs> <laughs> a big and small <laughs> oh you know, stamps.com gives you access to all the post office and UPS shipping services you need, but that's right from your computer. And you get discounts that you can't find anywhere else, like up to 40% off USPS rates and 76% off of UPS rates out there. What I want you to do is I want you to go to stamps.com and use the promo code TOASTED. Why? because that'll get you a special offer that includes four weeks of a trial period with stamps.com, free postage, and a digital scale. And there are no long-term commitments when you do this. So if you're thinking I'm trying to put you in some long contract with stamps.com because it just sounds too good to be true, I am not. Stop living your own horror movie and going to the post office. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to deal with that. You know you don't. And I want to thank stamps.com for sponsoring this portion of the show, this review, and I want to thank all of you out there for your support. Thank you. You know, the thing with Scream, you know, it's groundbreaking, it's influential, uh, you know, because of that, it's considered a masterpiece, definitely deserves its praise and its shining place in history. Mm -hmm. But what I want to talk about here, in addition to just doing a retro review and getting to know Scream all over again, because I hadn't seen Scream since it was... Uh, uh, I have, I've watched it several times before, but it's been years, really. Same here. Yeah, I haven't had time to watch as many movies as I would like over and over again. Uh, Scream is definitely one of those movies that when it's on, I'll yeah, watch it. Yeah. Uh, used to watch it a lot at the, you know, back in the day. But how does it hold up today? Has it aged well in, you know, at, at all? You know, This is going to be a spoilery discussion, so if you haven't seen it yet... You know, you're one of those people who f f somehow still doesn't know how this movie plays out. Then you know the deal. 
Continue at your own risk. Yeah, 25 years. Yeah, can, can we give him another 25 years to watch it? <laughs> Go ahead. We'll wait. You know, <laughs> Let's be your daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, right, right. <laughs> As a horror comedy, I'll even throw Thriller in there. Does it still hold up? I think it does. It does still hold up very well. But the big question is, okay, it may hold up as a horror movie, as a comedy, as a thriller, but does it still have the same impact? And the reason why I ask this is because, all right, so take that opening, for example. You know, when you, uh, when you first saw Scream back in the day, if you were lucky to see it when it was in the theaters, back in the day, the first time it came out, uh, you know, casting Drew Barrymore in this movie, it, that was that was crazy and that was brilliant because, you know, when you with, with Drew Barrymore, she's being marketed as the star of the movie. You know, her yep. picture is on the poster right there. She's standing in front of everybody. That's her face right there. Mm -hmm. Plus, you didn't get big names like her in horror movies. Well, you didn't get big names. You didn't get big. She was a leading woman, so you didn't get big names like her, and pay her a shitload of money only to turn around and kill her in the first 10 minutes of the movie, which is what they, which is what they did here. You know, she caused money. She was a, she was a, a, a she's very expensive. she was a name that brought people to the theater. Mm -hmm. She's, she's Hollywood legacy, man. She's Hollywood royalty. If you paid for Drew Barrymore, you weren't going to waste money by killing her in the first 10 minutes. So when you saw her in the movie, you're like, you damn right she's going to be hanging out at the end of the credits. You making popcorn? Uh-huh. Halloween. You know, the one with the guy in the white mask who walks around and stalks babysitters. Boy, I love how easy she made this for the killer. Door unlocked, <laughs> windows wide open. So many windows everywhere. So <laughs> Doors made out of windows. Pulling out. <laughs> say, hey, use this knife right here. Because he could stab him. Yeah. yeah. Pull it, pulled out the good silverware for him. Yeah. Of course, the movie said, you know what? Drew Barrymore. <laughs> <laughs> we we paid for it. If we want to kill our ass in the first 10 minutes of the movie, then god damn it, that's what we gonna do. <laughs> People, it's a great opening. It is. Yeah. But it's when, suspenseful. Oh, it's suspenseful, but when I saw when I saw this back in 1996, I was just like everybody else. You know, I, who, who's gonna kill Drew Barrymore? And you know, and, and and so when you went to see this back in 1996, and they actually not only killed her but like gutted her. Oh yeah, had her by her entrails, and the cord of the phone on the tree just hanging in there. Yeah, because yeah. because getting stabbed, you could survive that. No. I mean, even, I mean, even in real life, but yeah. seeing her strung up on that tree and like, oh, she's really Whoa. not coming back. With her guts hanging out, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's for some people, it's like me with training day. She ain't dead. <laughs> she, 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 she'll, she'll be back. Just put them back inside yeah. her. She'll be fine. Yeah, she'll get, they'll, they'll untie her. She'll put it back in. <laughs> Duct tape her. She'll be Sewed all up. right. Yeah. yeah, it'll be all right. You know, it's a great opening, but, yeah. you know, this is back when the meta thing. Not, you know, this is when it was It was unheard of. It was unheard of. It was something new. Uh, so, you know, seeing that, that really got me. I, it took me off guard. It took everybody off guard mm -hmm. when they went to see it. And everybody... Everybody was bragging about it. You can, and it was almost like a thing where you really didn't want to spoil it for people, but you told people, man, go see it That if for nothing else. That first 10 minutes is worth it, man. But, you know, the question is, now that the meta thing is not so new, now that Drew Barrymore is not in so many movies and it's sure. not maybe as big impactful. for... Impactful or as mm -hmm. big for, like, Gen Z people and millennials out there, uh, does it... I mean, can it have the same impact? Just the scene itself? Well, just, or, or just, just the rest of the movie well, after just, that you know, point. This particular scene right here, which does kind of set up the rest of the movie very well, and set up, and, you know, and sets the movie up to have a huge impact. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're the big screen well, person. Well, yeah? well, it's funny that you, you brought this up with Drew Barrymore. This almost didn't happen because she was initially cast as as Nev Campbell's character, Sidney mm -hmm. Prescott, mm -hmm. and it was because of Drew Barrymore's involvement that Wes Craven said, "Okay, now I'm interested in this movie." Because before oh. he passed on, he said, okay. "Okay, I'm going to come back. I'm going to do this great movie of Drew Barrymore. It's going to be great." And then she, b before they started filming, principal photography, she said, "I don't want to play the main character of the movie, and I want to play the girl that dies in the opening ten minutes." Wow! Uh, wow. So she She's was the, the reason why this happened. They went, oh, God, like, but, you, but you're, you're 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 the person who's going to sell the movie. You're on the She's, posters already. We're and, paying you on this money. <laughs> and she convinced Wes Craven. She convinced the scriptwriter Ken Williamson and the Weinstein's. This was their film with Dimensions mm -hmm. that. This will work. This will get people in there. 
And that's what they did. It, and so, yeah. it, again, it, I, know, I, I know what you're asking where it's like, at the time, that was no one expected that. Right. But yeah. I, th- I feel like nowadays, if you if you want the same impact, you would have to have that knowledge to a degree. But I feel like for the rest of the movie, how they defy those tropes with those certain characters who we always see in other horror films, and they either live or they either die. I like. I think that's what still works. This might not be as effective as it is anymore. This opening, but still is effective with context. Yeah, I tell you, I knew she was going to die though at one point because of the way she just over Steve. Steve, the boyfriend. Yeah, poor Steve. Steve was gone. Poor, poor, <laughs> poor Steve. She, she did not hesitate to throw Steve out there when she was about to die at one moment. You know, when she's, uh, when she's, because when she's talking to Ghostface on the phone at that time, and let me see if I even have the clip here. <laughs> when she showed us trying to set something up behind Steve's back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What do you look like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have she, a boyfriend. Oh, she ain't. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. The, the, she, the, I knew she was going to die the way she just threw Steve out there. Because when she was about to die, boy, she did not. She, she, she was immediately just uh, pumping Steve up. My boyfriend, big, plays football. He going <laughs> to kick your ass. I do have a boyfriend. He's big and he plays football. And he'll kick the shit out of you. You mean, like this dude? <laughs> this, this little dude right here? Oh, God. <laughs> Steve, I'm typing you up! <laughs> Damn it! Uh, Steve. <laughs> Earlier, though, she was ready. She was, she was about to drop them draws and Steve <laughs> for this sex-ass voice on the phone. So, you got a boyfriend? <laughs> Why? You want to ask me out on a date? Do you have a boyfriend? Mm. No. You know Steve out there. <laughs> <laughs> Back to how this scene uh, holds up, man. It it does. It holds up so well. I mean, this I'm on this is not gonna be the first time I mention this. This movie's so well directed, man. Um choreography is great. Well it this, is you know, so suspenseful, like the way they just use atmosphere to build a lot of the suspense in here, like the smoke burning from the popcorn. Oh. You know, there's the moment the That popcorn gave me so much anxiety. I, I had more anxiety from the popcorn than the killer. Mm-hmm. I was like, just take it off. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever else happens, just take it off the stove. Come on. You burn this shit down. <laughs> Yeah, there was that because see now you see what you're saying? Yeah. You're getting anxious. Yeah. yeah. You know, it just adds to more of the stress and suspense that you feel mm-hmm. in this scene because you see something else going on that normally you want to take care of, in addition to her being chased around the house by this killer. Uh the the, the way the the mood just changed. Like it was almost like you know, the, like the way Ghostface is uh is bipolar, man. Yeah. But before he just kinda <laughs> yeah. like, Hey, how you doing? You're making popcorn. Bitch, I got you. <laughs> Listen, asshole! No, you listen, you little bitch. If you hang up on me again, I'll gut you like a fish. <laughs> God damn it, she's like, whoa! She, she's like, even she's like, Jesus, calm your ass down. Yeah, wow. okay. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> you know, I love the movie for its cleverness. Oh, yeah. Scream, you know, uh, but some things, okay, this is where I'm going to start saying that some things did not age so well <laughs> okay. for me. Um, so this starts... It starts out immediately when we when we're introduced to Sydney. Now I'm gonna tell you, looking at Drew Barrymore in this, looking at Drew Barrymore, even looking at poor old Steve over here, <laughs> you know, I can kind of buy that those are teenagers. But once we're introduced to Nev Campbell as Sydney, the main character of the movie, and they try to show her in high school, I like get the fuck that bullshit. I was like, and listen, you know, because they're trying to pass her off as a teenager. And trying to pass off 30 year olds as teens, you know, that's nothing that is new. You know, they've been doing this for years. They do it now. They really did it a lot in the 90s. Yeah. And she's not even 30 here. I think she was like 20, 23 or 24. Yeah. She was, that's how old she is. Yeah. Was she already on Party of Five at this point? Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. So, you know, she's 23 or 24 here, and people, it shows. And there's a lot of ways they probably could have gotten around it because they just, they didn't really try to go out their way to make her look like a teenager. For example, one, uh, don't put her in a classroom with actual kids and teenagers. Thank you, Jimmy. 
Look at that boy right there. Oh, <laughs> he, he, he looking at that. Look at your old ass out the class. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm like, when you see him, it's like... Why, why is the teacher from my last class sitting in the class? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he like, if you don't get your old ass up and go to work, <laughs> sitting in this class trying to act like you a t- student. <laughs> Oh, but when it gets to her friends, you know, the rest of the gang. <laughs> you think she looks old? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on. Yeah. Matthew Lillard already looks 32 by this point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, when you get to when you get to the rest of the gang up here trying to like friends or something, they... You know, <laughs> down, 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 down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 look, he look just like an old-ass friends right here. Yeah, <laughs> You know your ass too old to be going to school this way. <laughs> Man, okay, maybe Rose McGowan, maybe, maybe she can pass for a team, but Skeet Ulrich and Matthew Lennon and Jamie Kennedy, no, f- Y'all, man. They're all in their 20s, though. They're all, no, they're all in their 20s. They just don't look like teenagers. Sure. Did you really put her liver in the mailbox? Because I heard that they found her liver in the mailbox next to her spleen and her pancreas. What are you doing? Fucking trying to eat here. Never alone. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> mentally, they're children. Yeah, yeah they are. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what sells it because yeah. Matthew's character is so over exaggerated. Of course, and, he's immature. And, yeah, he's immature. He's spazzy. He's got ADD. Yeah. And Billy Loomis is just horny. <laughs> All yeah, the time. Skin Orange is horny. Uh, she's even. She's like Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they, you know, they all look like they need to be looking for grown up jobs right now. <laughs> yes. Instead yes. of being in high school. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things that did not actually translate to me very well here. And, and something just, I'm very sensitive to in movies anyway. You know, just. It's a, funny because for me looking at it, all I just thought was like, wow, they look, look like such babies compared to how I think of them now. Oh, now it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Jim, Jim Kennedy it looks like Santa Claus now. <laughs> Full gray oh, beard. Does he? Yeah, he does. Yeah. 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 No, they all are like dads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, at this yeah. point. Honestly, for me, it, it doesn't bother me. You know, uh, everyone loves how self-aware the movie is. You know, they love, you, you know, you saw the scene when telling the rules and whatnot. You know, they love how self-aware it is with the horror tropes. Mm-hmm. And usually the audience, and that's cool because usually the audience is the one that's aware, the director's aware, but the people in the movie are the stupid ones. Sure. You yes. know, it, all the time people watch zombie movies and it's, and it's always that like, if you people never heard of zombies, <laughs> don't you know what how this goes? Yeah. And so, yeah. so here they're like, hey, no, we have this in our world. Yeah. We know. Not only are they aware, but they, they, shout, they shout it out loud to let everybody know that they know what's going on. Number one. You can never have sex. <laughs> big no. Oh, bottle that is there. No popcorn. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. What the you talking about? Oh, big no. Oh, day man. Even in popcorn. Oh, sex God. equals death. Okay. Matthew Lillard. Is, he I mean, loves Lillard. doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Matthew Lillard is just like a lizard, man. He just keeps sticking his tongue out <laughs> and everything. Are you thirsty? <laughs> I, I swear, yeah. watching this again, I was like, every time I was like, Jesus, he's over the top. But then I would think, no, I actually know. I've known guys like this. Mm-hmm. Never mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't looking at you. Okay. I mean, I'm looking at you, but I'm not looking. You know what I mean. Funny, I've known guys just like this. <laughs> and number three, never, ever, ever under any circumstances say, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Oh, oh, you've done it now, buddy. <laughs> you like, bitch, you dead. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, you know, this movie, and it does it so well, man. It does, it does, uh, it calls out not only the tropes, but the cliches, the real bad ones. I'll tell you what, this movie goes in on hard cliches so hard that you should be ashamed of yourself if you repeat any of these today. <laughs> right? I mean, once a, yep. mo- once a movie calls it out, you got no excuse for doing that shit over again. What's your favorite scary movie? What's the point? They're all the same. Some stupid killer stalking some big-breasted girl who can't act who's always running up the stairs when she should be going out the front door. It's insulting. You take out the big-breasted woman, replace her with, and don't take this as an offense, just hear me out, take out the, brick, the big-breasted woman, replace her with a dumbass gay couple, and what Nev Campbell described right there was exactly Halloween Kills. Mm-hmm. There's a scene yep. in Halloween Kills where she, dis- that's exactly what she described. Yep. When your ass should be running out the house because you got the back door and the front door wide open, what do you decide <laughs> to do? You decide to go upstairs where the killer is. And or, you already, it's not like he's a new killer either. It's Michael Myers who's already, who's already legendary. Mm-hmm. Sure, 
Sure. Yeah. I mean, I get frustrated enough when people run upstairs rather than out. Just because run upstairs, you're trapped. It, yeah. it, tactically, it doesn't even make any sense. But in Halloween Kills, there's a definite reason to not go upstairs there's a, with yeah. a cheese knife. And they know. They, they live, yeah, with a cheese knife living in Michael Myers' house. I mean, that's why I really disliked Halloween Kills as much as I did because you had movies like Scream who years ago mm. already called you on that bullshit. Yeah. The movie talk that they're doing here is great. That's why when it didn't work as well, for me, it stood out because I think there are moments where the movie discussions it can get it can get a little too obvious. Well, you have to remember this is the first time they ever did something like this. Yeah. So yeah. if it was a little too obvious, I think that's on purpose because just, some yeah. audiences just don't know. Well, yeah, you know, and that's true. And that's why I said I don't think it aged well today because obviously oh, okay. back in the day, I probably didn't have a problem with it. But now watching, I'm like, ah, you know, a lot of this stuff is brilliant. The movie discussions, the meta discussions that they have here. But sometimes it just doesn't feel very natural. No, I was home watching television. The, uh, the Exorcist was on. No one does this in The Exorcist. <laughs> I thought you were going to say I was watching a Western. He was pointing at the TV. That's yeah, what he was doing. Like, that I'm thing. I'm trying to think. What was that thing? Yeah. What was that? Pew, pew, pew. Got me thinking of you. Lately, we're just sort of edited for television. I like the way she was looking earlier. She's like, you know what? If you're... If you're trying to make me horny, this is this is not working at all. <laughs> I am dry as ever. Yeah. Ain't nothing but sandpaper down there. <laughs> You've actually had the opposite effect. <laughs> you know, uh, that was a little force to me. It's not even, really, it's not even accurate when you think about it. Hey, Billy. Did you settle for a PG-13 relationship? What's that? He just falls from it. I, know. <laughs> I ain't never. I don't know about y'all, but I ain't never seen no PG thirteen titties before. Because they don't show you those. Yeah, you don't see. That's you what Wes Craven ah, just did. Yeah. PG thirteen relationship, and then the camera uh, yeah. cuts back to her. That's what that is. Ah. And his whole thing talking about the Exorcist. That's a payoff in the end of the movie when you find out what he really is. Because he's movie obsessed. Yeah. He studied these yeah. in order to become what he eventually becomes. Yeah. And so yeah. I like that scene. No, I, I and hammer somehow f***ing creepy he is, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, 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 you know, I love anything where the the, the handsome guy turns out to be the villain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. or they kill a handsome guy early. <laughs> there are so many scenes that work better for me uh, in here that feel natural are are very funny. Mm -hmm. uh, that was not one of them. Don't hate the scene. It's just that that one felt a little forced. Uh, but they do, like I said, they do some brilliant uh, uh, meta within meta jokes here. Mm nested meta sure. things in here uh i love that scene when jamie kennedy's uh watching uh he's watching halloween oh, and he's like look behind you and meanwhile this guy's like he's watching he's he's watching him watching this guy's watching him <laughs> he's this guy's watching jamie kennedy and jamie kennedy's watching halloween and jamie kennedy's sitting up there the whole time like behind you behind you look behind you and this guy's like yeah look behind you kid look behind you <laughs> behind you oh. Behind you, kid! Behind you! Look around. He's like, F this, this movie too scary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take this. Uh, I love that scene. Sure, right sure. There. And only the real, it's like, oh shit, there's a 30 second there's delay. 30 second delay. Yeah. He, he, and he forgot about that too. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, that and entire he for it. that entire last third of the movie, which is 40 minutes just at the house, that is all brilliant. Oh, I love is. all of it. I love that stuff too, man. I love I love that those house scenes at the at the end. They're, for one, and we're gonna talk about this in a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, as a as a horror movie, as a thriller, as a murder mystery, they, it all works in that way in, in those last minutes uh, in the house. But also, there's a lot of funny stuff doing that. Oh point. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a lot. Like as a comedy, it just works very well. I love that they beat the shit out of Ghostface constantly. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, kick his ass. <laughs> always, always, he's always tripping and falling and getting things and getting nuts. Racked. Always going, oh, no. <laughs> how dare you? You know, those discussions also are used to mess with the audience. Again, that's why I think that they're brilliant, man. Those discussions that they use here when, you know, when, uh, when they're talking very meta, when they're doing examination hard, uh, is meant to throw the audience off. Even though, and when I, not, not even throw them off. Actually, it's meant to do the opposite. That's how it's messing with the audience. Uh, because in the movie, they pretty much, this is one of the 
rare movies where they tell you who the killer is. Not show you, they're just constantly telling you who the killer is. Uh, again, at this point, we told you it's a spoiler discussion. Uh, we all know who the killers are in this movie. You know, we know that it's killers. Uh, it's oh, killers. Did you say plural? Ooh, what? Yes, <laughs> that's right. Uh, it's Billy because, well, Billy, again, if you know the movie, Billy has abandonment issues. Your slut mother was my father. And she's the reason my mom moved out and abandoned me. She's like, who gives a f What? Yeah. She's, just, she's like, grow up. That, that does not explain all this. I'm sorry. <laughs> and the funny thing is, there's a point early in the movie where Skeet Ulrich tells Nev Campbell's uh, Sydney, he says, y'all, this whole stuff with your dead mother, get over it. Right. That's what, <laughs> she should tell her that right now. Well, fuck it. It's what you told me earlier. Get over it. Gaslighting. Bitch. Yeah. yeah. It's like, wait, is it your mother or is it because you're horny? I don't understand why you've it's, done all it's this. It's that. It's a combination. Yeah, it's a combination. Too. Yeah, yeah. Because if I gave you some. Total abandonment causes serious deviant behavior. It certainly f***ed you up. It made you have sex with a psychopath. That's right. You gave it up. Now you're no longer a virgin. <laughs> Stu is just crazy. Yes. You know, so, like they, they even ask, what's your motivation? Is this peer pressure? <laughs> you know, it's funny because as killers in the movie, and they're telling you who they are as it goes on, uh... They, they are the real lovers in the movie. Mm -hmm. True. <laughs> yep. And I'm saying, you know, I'm, I, I know people saying, y'all are trying to make gay no, folks and no. make people gay. No. Now, I'm going to lay some heavy shit on you, you know, if you want to go deep with it. Uh, because, uh, you know, see the movie where they're all hugged up on each other and everything. To frame. Watch a few movies, take a few notes. <laughs> <laughs> right, Billy? Right, right? <laughs> Billy, your hair smells so good. <laughs> <laughs> but... When we get to the scene where the, uh, they start stabbing each other. Oh, let me see if I can find out. Uh, this Brilliant scene. <laughs> I just can't believe what I'm seeing. Even she's like, what the f***? <laughs> crazy. So that scene where, they, where they're stabbing each other. Get up! Get up, man! Get up! Hit it! Come on, man. Oh, man. Deep, man. Man. Being a villain hurts. <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> you, no, no, man. No, no. We, we're not doing this. No, no. you don't. <laughs> don't give him a knife. You don't ask a dude to stab you that you just stabbed. Cause you gonna make that shit try to hurt yeah. as much as possible, man. <laughs> you. I know we planned this shit, but that hurt. <laughs> Forget. Stay to the side and don't go too deep. I remember. <laughs> Man, bitch, how does that feel? I love that. Uh, oh, you just wait till it's your turn. <laughs> oh, ooh, you gonna get it? <laughs> he should have just gave the knife to Nev Campbell at that point, yeah. right? right? <laughs> but you know, the thing with this man, they are the real lovers in the movie, and that right there, it's gonna sound kind of crazy, but that's their love scene. That's their sure. sex scene right sure. there. Because they're penetrating each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That, you know, that right there is the, the real sex scene in the movie. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, man, this movie's brilliant in so many ways with how deep they go with things. I mean, they, I talk about how maybe the, the dialogue is so obvious sometimes, but there are so many things in here that they put in at little subtle, clever jokes and clever meanings and hidden meanings. It's amazing, man, what they do uh, with this movie. Um, you know, uh, uh, but like I was saying before... Uh, Got off track with these these guys over here. They're telling you who the killers are in the movie, man. Yes. Early, early. I mean, about what, 15, 20 minutes into the movie, Jamie mm -hmm. Kennedy's already saying, that mother did it. And are the police aware that you dated the victim? Was that before or after he sliced and diced? And I like the way Skeet Art is like, like, he's like, yeah, don't put me in the middle of this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or he's like, we yeah. got to kill him quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to go. He does, he does the same thing with Billy's character in the he video made, store. He, he made the list. Yeah, no, he he pretty much, again, like I said, the whole movie, they're, they're saying that these dudes are the killers. Uh, they're also saying that, hey, this could have been solved, but nobody wanted to listen but, to the nerd. But nobody right. nobody mm -hmm. wanted to listen to the movie geek over here. The guy who works at a video store and knows everything <laughs> about horror movies. The Quentin Tarantino <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, the dad's a red herring. It's Billy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Billy, I ain't mean you. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in another Billy. You know, another Billy, another class. I'm, I'm in Billy Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> they even gave that fool horror. <laughs> they gave him. They gave him horror movie music. They yeah. gave him the villain's theme. Yeah. It's Billy. 
How do we know you're not the killer? Huh? Huh? Hi, Billy. We should f*** him, too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill him yet, Billy. Let's have sex with him. <laughs> Maybe your movie freaked mind lost its reality button. You ever think of that? You're absolutely right. What would be your motive? Oh, come on, man. Jesus. <laughs> come on. <laughs> your hair smells good, too. <laughs> Strawberry. <laughs> I, I, I love they didn't they didn't hold Matthew Lillard back. No, just, no just I love him. I actually love this movie, yeah. man. <laughs> and just him being so erratic. It throws you off on what what to think about him. No, you should have known he was a killer too. It was crazy. <laughs> sure, ass. but at the same time, you're like, it's, it's, he's just so crazy. He's too goofy. He's too yeah. goofy. It can't be him. Yeah. Or can it be? Motive. But... It's the millennium. Okay. Are you telling me that's not a killer? What? <laughs> <laughs> I love the way he turned around. pointing to that guy. <laughs> not he you, is Billy. so sure. He didn't even wait till Billy get across the room. He's like, yeah, f that guy. He killed people. That's him. The you bitch. <laughs> That's a running gag with Randy's character because he does the same thing in the sequel. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Nah, this. No, I, I love that, man. Even Wes Craven is telling you who the killer is. There's a point where they're at, uh, uh, they're at Matthew Lillard Stewart's party, and one of the dudes at the party just yells out. And it's, it's, the way he delivers that line, too, mm. is so funny. He talks about how the blood is too red. Here it comes. <laughs> you know, they did that because not much later in the movie, Billy is killed. You know, they have the the, yeah. the the fake out scene right here where he gets killed. And notice after that line of the blood is too red. Look at what we do here. <laughs> That blood is so red it's right too there. Red. It's too red. <laughs> ain't, ain't no holes in that shirt yeah, at true, all. Yeah. True. Wes Craven was f***ing with us at this point. Yeah. He just said that the blood is too red, and we see the blood is too red. We see no holes in there, but for some reason, we still want to think that old handsome Billy. Oh, he... Oh, just, oh, I was so sure it was him, and now, mm -hmm. now he's dead. Who could it possibly exactly. be? Exactly. Oh, Billy, why'd they have to kill your pretty ass? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> First Johnny, now you. No. We should have known, again, from those hints that Billy was the killer. They put it out there. They were messing with us the whole time. They, it's, it was a magic trick that yeah. Wes Craven was pulling right sure. here. We should have known Billy was the killer because he's just a creep. Yeah. Always. <laughs> Consistently. Consistently. There's a, we were talking about he's crawling through windows at night. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just watched The Exorcist. You know, going sneaking in people's rooms. And what really makes him extra creepy is that he's so horny. He don't give a, I mean, straight up. Just gaslighting her for some sex, man. Not not giving a shit that that yeah. she's been almost mm -hmm. that she's been almost sliced up, stabbed, almost murdered, but also that her mother died. Her mother was mutilated. Her mother yeah. was raped and, and mutilated. Like, can you get over it enough to give me some pussy? What's wrong? <laughs> no. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Billy, I was attacked and nearly filleted last night. I mean, between us. <laughs> I mean, so what? Wait, I'm talking about yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Besides all that. Yeah, fuck that bitch. Wait a minute. I'm talking about us. The same since... Since your mother died. Is your brain leaking? My mom was killed. I can't believe <laughs> She can't even talk. She can't even crazy. <laughs> I love that stuttering. That was good. Yeah, yeah, Very yeah. authentic. Oh, uh, tomorrow. One year tomorrow. I know what. I think it's time you got over that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, do you okay. now? <laughs> <laughs> now you said that. I'll just drop the panties. Here we go. Yeah. Right. Let's do it. Yeah, we should have known that he was the killer just by being such a creep before. I tell you this: the kills, I think, hold up mostly. Not all the way. <laughs> Which one doesn't hold up? I'm okay. curious. Oh, come on, you know. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, I, okay, you, I'm gonna ask y'all because I don't know what you're thinking, but this. Because a couple of them, they, they, they don't hold up so much that they are unintentionally funny. They're hilarious. They add to the comedy of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Look, the one I'm thinking of, that had to be intentionally funny. I hope so, because uh, yeah. well, the one I'm thinking of here, you can, you tell me if you are thinking of this, because yeah. Rose McGowan's yep. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. yeah. That she, was that was hilarious. She's, she's, I, I love this, man, because, she, I mean, first of all, it's stupid because she tries to escape through a cat door. I mean, you fine. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, you yeah, fine yeah. as hell. Don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but you can't. You ain't gonna fit through no cat door, man. When they finally, when she got caught up in the door, and Ghostface 
press the button to it's crush her, to crush her in there, that looked crazy. <laughs> she, she looks like a she looks like a Michael Jackson sex doll. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, even as fast as it goes, I was like, hey, wait a minute. So that was not the original scene. Oh. When they had to submit this for its the rating, they got an NC seventeen rating. Oh, well, so they, crush they, the head. they have to go back and put this in here, and wait, so they had a whole wait, other wait, showing the head mm -hmm. when well, they show her head, and it was it looked a lot better. But it's like we we can't do a, a, other scenes, and so that's what the one they used. Oh wow, oh, wow! But there's a whole other scene where it's much gorier and stuff. Shit, they should have just took that scene out. Thinking that looks fake as hell. Yeah, yeah, they could have yeah. just cut that happening and then shown the aftermath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, but you know, you, you own a home with a, with an electric garage. What happens if you touch it? <laughs> what? Stop, it stops. stops. Yes. 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 Hey, it's the '90s, man. <laughs> Things were crazy back then. Garage doors didn't stop. Shit, the garage door was working with ghost faces. Yeah. <laughs> it was I'm, three killers in I'm the movie. Saying, if, that, if that door is going up and you just go peek, it, it, it stops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> shit, that's what you get. That's what you get for buying the cheap shit. <laughs> She is. She, yeah, she ordered a goddamn garage door open on Craigslist, and that's what she got, right? <laughs> Dan, that, that thing punched her, oh, man. It did, yeah, it did. Man, Henry Winkler, man, his death. It's not crazy, but it did have, man, his reaction made me laugh. I just, I laughed so hard. Man, his mouth, he got the biggest mouth in the movie. <laughs> That's real. Oh, man. Yeah. He didn't know he was behind yeah, yeah, like, there. <laughs> <laughs> they, they scared the shit out of him. That's natural. That's yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. Henry Winkler is a great actor. He ain't that damn good. No, no. no this, 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 it's a movie about you coming into an inner city school and, and, and teaching the kids, you know, kind of like that Morgan Freeman movie. It's, it's going to be great. And we got a great ending yeah. for you. <laughs> that fool didn't know. They didn't tell Henry Winkler when they yelled action, they didn't tell him that anybody was behind that door. <laughs> They had a whole scene. They said, you're going to go back to your desk and you're going to deliver this long <laughs> Academy Award winning monologue. <laughs> much, he, was, he had his game face. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He spent all night practicing, getting his lines down. <laughs> he was ready to go there and act. <laughs> <laughs> you know the yell, cut. Man, f*** y'all. <laughs> Doing that shit. Man, you better not keep that. <laughs> uh, man, Matthew Lillard had Probably the best death and the oh. fun, the funniest yeah. and best death in the movie, man. His screams going out, that cracked me up too. I think it's great. It's still funny to me though. In your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love that. Uh, but man, he couldn't do that today. Why is that? Everybody has flat panels. Oh, that's yeah, right. true. Those fat TVs, they'll kill yeah. you. Well, if you turn it vertical. <laughs> <laughs> Cut them in half? What do you, what do you want to do? Put a, you know, I don't know, crack his skull or something. You angle it just right. But yeah, you can't do it with a flat screen. You just be like, hey, you kiss it me. Exactly. <laughs> and what's funny about that, Dev, too, is that, you know, uh, Wes Craven's referencing uh, uh, Dream Warriors. Well, it's oh, like, welcome oh, to prime, prime time, bitch. bitch. Puts her head there. He says, in your dreams. It's all. It's all, it's all uh, yeah. I didn't know. I did not know yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. yeah you say death. Yeah. I'm going to say death with Matthew Lurks. Yeah. I don't think he dies here. Yeah. He he was telling me about a whole a sequel where Matthew Lillard lived and uh -huh. was teaching a whole new uh, crop of teenagers to go be <laughs> Ghostface. It was supposed to be Scream 3. That's oh. what that movie was going oh, to wow. be. But they changed it because uh, Columbine. And they didn't uh, want anyone like the idea of a student yeah. teaching people to be murderers. Uh, you know, but I think that's the plot they're going to use for this. New wait, movie. by screen three, was he still going to be a student? No, he just he's just, he's he comes he's, he's injured, older. but he's teaching new. So, he, oh, okay. so his face so would have been all burnt, disfigured, scarred yeah. up, and like a typical you know serial sure. killer, Casey serial killer movie. Yeah. Kruger, yeah. Well, yeah, we'll see, man. Maybe this, maybe we'll <laughs> Freddy Krueger, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Shaggy will return. He will <laughs> return. He's going to come. I think Shaggy that's what I would do. Yeah. Speaking of laughing, man. The comedy still holds up in this. I think it's I, they, they have some scenes that are so funny, man. Uh, and a lot of them, like I've said, are later on uh, in that the house party scenes mm -hmm. because they did hit them, man. They did him wrong. I was almost I, was, I got mad in a way because they <laughs> what happens is they mention that the principal has died and they have it. They say he's been strung up on the on the football field with his insides hanging out, his intestines hanging out. And this is the, these little bastard ass kids, man. This this is their response, which I did laugh at. Listen up. They found Principal Henry dead. 
Let's go over there before they pry him down. Hey. <laughs> oh, shit. Kenny's like, oh. Yeah, he's like, what do you want with that? He cared about us. I laughed so hard at that, man. <laughs> they, they left the party to go see that dead principal. Mm -hmm. That guy, man, he didn't He didn't deserve that. He, he, did. actually, he, he cared about those kids. Yeah, he did. He actually said, this is your principal. I love you. He gave them like yeah. a week off from school. Yeah. And that's what he got. Mm -hmm. That's what that was the thing that he got, man. Yeah, and I know that that was the thing about him getting killed. It's like, oh, why him? He, he, he There's an explanation do... for that. He wasn't supposed to die originally. Oh. Wes Craven said, "It's been too long since we killed somebody." Henry Winkler, it's you. Oh, <laughs> damn. And he thought it would be a good way to do that because I want to do my cameo in the movie. It's gonna be like, oh, it's gonna be like a funny little scene where I cameo oh, right. myself, and then we'll kill you. That's yeah. how it worked out. But, but he'd be everyone at ease. Mm. He didn't, this man didn't deserve it. He didn't do nothing to nobody. Because <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. even when I looked at the movie, I, I was saying, why'd they kill him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't do nothing. Yeah. He was, he was like, a cool guy. I know. And kill an extra person, that just takes a more of a chance of you getting caught, leaving evidence behind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, little punk ass kids, man. They would. They were in such a hurry to go see the, the, the dead body of the principal, they almost killed somebody else. Oh, sure. right. Coming fast. Slow down. Freeze. <laughs> Hot oh, Stewie. Man, for it's a movie called Dewey. Scream, there's a lot of screaming. Yeah, yeah, they live up to the name. I thought it was very cool that they uh, got uh, Dewey and Gail Weathers together, man. Oh, yeah. Because without them getting together, they could have been easily just a bunch of uh, lazy stereotypes. No, sure. exactly. Yeah, she's the you know the the reporter who's just trying to get her next big story. He's just an idiot cop. Yeah, he's just yeah he's just the uh, uh, you know goofball. He's, he's comedy. doing. He's doing. He's, doing. <laughs> he's, he's goofball comedy relief here. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was cool because when they got together, it actually made them more characters. It humanized them better. You know, it gave them some dimension. So I thought that that was kind of. It cool. brought out the best of them when they're together. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I you know, I never I was one of those people who did not. Because a lot of people did not like Gail. I never had anything against Gail. I thought, like, you know, maybe she's right. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, uh, well, <laughs> well, I mean, she was right. Was that, Cotton. That, that, Cotton, yeah, yeah. Cotton was, you know, he was, you know, he was convicted er erroneously. Yeah. And, uh... And when she yelled the cameraman, I, I laughed. Oh, poor Kenny. I, mean, I mean, I might have thought she was a bitch back in 1996, but this time I was like, "You go, girl." Yeah. <laughs> Your fat lard ass. When I say lard, move, move. lard ass, Jesus. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, if you're not familiar with this part of the movie, uh, so you have what's her name? Courtney Cox. Courtney Cox plays a, a reporter, Gail yeah. Weathers, and she does not believe Sydney because Sydney's mother was raped and, uh, and, murdered. and murdered. And so Sydney pointed out the guy who Gail thinks might be the wrong guy. Mm -hmm. And I, when she delivered that scene, I actually thought like, you know what? I kind of believe Gail more than I do yeah. believe Sydney. I don't know why. <laughs> sure. I feel like an asshole for that, but I, I did like that. What I like about that is that it actually makes you question uh, yes. Sydney's mentality. You got what you wanted? Cotton Weary's in jail. They're going to gas him. A book is not going to change that. Shit. Mm. <laughs> She's like, you, you better yeah. get out of here, girl. <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> called me a fat ass. <laughs> she drops truth bombs. She's right. I do have a lard ass. You already called me a lard ass. You might want to go. <laughs> she called me a bitch. Do you still think he's innocent? Your testimony put him away. It doesn't really matter what I think. I think you falsely identified him, yes. You know, I don't know why I thought Sydney was not telling the truth. Not that she was lying, but that no, she was no, wrong. That, yeah, she was wrong. And she was, a, you know, I guess a child. I mean, I, oh, I guess it was only a year ago, so you're not really a child. But, yeah, uh, eyewitness testimony is wrong all the time. Hmm. Yeah. I, maybe it's because... Uh, because Gail wasn't as bad as this other aggressive-ass reporter in here. Do you remember that reporter? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell me, how was how was the Belmont murdered? How was how was the Belmont sliced up and dying? The world needs to know. And like you knew at this job, aren't you? So how does it feel to be almost brutally butchered? Hey, hey, no, leave her alone. People want to know. They have a right to know. How does it feel? <laughs> She's still off camera. How does it feel? Bitch, you hear me? Isn't that? I forget. Isn't that the the girl who played Reagan from The Exorcist? Oh, is that? Oh, I think that's uh, the same actress. Blair, uh, Linda Blair. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I think that's Linda Blair. Well, go go back. I don't. Think so, but uh, actually, I can see it. It might be because she's, you know, she's made up mm -hmm. to yeah. look like a, you know, re like a an average reporter. I think that's Linda Blair. The, and you know what? It makes sense because you know that's not kind mm. of oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Linda Blair. There were moments in here where they made you feel like the killer could strike at any time, sure. anywhere. 
I mean, this fool was going crazy in the daytime mm -hmm. in, in the school. in the girls' bathroom. Yeah. How the f did you get up in there? <laughs> first of all, your big ass. You know, yeah, he goes to that school. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. No, he but does. I mean, how you? When did you get in there? Were you were you hiding this whole time? Just waiting the whole time. You, don't you have class to go to? But I do think that that scene is is incredible because you know it was directed in the manner of slowly revealing that the killer is in there. First, you don't hear anything or see anything. Then you start suspecting that he might be there, but you're not sure. Then you see those two big ass size 13 oh, boots come down. Yeah. And what I love about when those shoes come down is that, well, you already know it's him, but just to like, you know, seal the deal, you see that gown come down yeah. like, oh, f She slid in the whole base oh, yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> safe. <laughs> Except not safe. No, no, not at all. Well, you know, it's funny because isn't the scene before this is when Billy's talking to her? Yeah, that's, yeah. So I think this is planned by them. And, you know, again, I'm not sure if the filmmakers have said this, but he gets her so angry and worked up. What do typical, where, where do women typically go to when they're upset? They yeah, go to the, the bathroom. bathroom. The bathroom. The bathroom. Wow. So you and, think and that they, they planned it to kill so her. So he was being creepy in a way on purpose to yeah. get her upset. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Damn, that's, see, man, there's so much to, like, pull from this movie, man. Examine, yeah. So many or small theorize. things in here to, like, pull out. It's so, it's. This is why this movie's so great, because. Uh, if only all the horror movies could do this. Yeah, 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 if only. only. For a movie that calls out all the hard tropes and all the rules, I still think that it doesn't follow those things completely itself. Or break, or or doesn't listen to its own advice. It's <laughs> not hearing its own lessons. Uh, and I, and there, you know, you could say that maybe that's done on purpose. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't. I, I'm not sure. Uh, this is part where, that you were talking mm -hmm. about. So they have a part where Sydney. Uh, man, I was yelling at the screen at the time. What the f are you doing going outside when the killers got you on the phone? Well, I call you bluff. You know, there's a killer out there. We know this. We know that the killer is, you know, that's, that, that, that's kind of their motive is to mess with people like this. So why would you even take a chance hmm. just walking out the door like that? I also, jump scares, man. I don't think that I... I <laughs> some of these, I, I don't <clears throat> think that they're meant to be clever or a statement on jump scares themselves. I think they they just doing cheap ass jump scares and you know, they don't work in this movie or they seem cheap just as they would in any other horror film. Look at the camera. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Well when you run up on somebody like that <laughs> I think, it's I think that's more for a gag. Yeah, that, that, I didn't that, mean like, to scare you. Like it's apologizing to the audience. I didn't yeah. mean to scare you guys. Yeah, and this is one thing that I think does not work at all. <laughs> And there's some silly moments, and you might remember sure. this. There are some silly ass ghost face moments in here. It just don't make any sense to me. That scene in the grocery store. Oh, you know what I'm talking. You remember the scene in the grocery yeah, store? Yeah. All right. Well, watch this. Cause I like no. I, okay. As smart as this movie is, why are we doing that? Yeah. In the middle of the store, and, and the day is—is is he shopping? Like, like if you, you see what I'm saying? Hey man, it might have been a Wednesday, and they had specials on that day. Yeah, they take the costume off first. Like, if you angle it the right way, is he? Can, does he have a basket? Yeah, right. He might. It would have been great if he is he like buying toilet paper and knives. You know, and those stakeouts like, with uh, that, Billy take that time. In the grocery store in the daytime in his ghost face costume. And they never looked over and noticed they never, him. Not, like nobody. Because the police, the police ain't playing. Like they know that this dude is, the, they, there's, a, there's somebody out there wearing a ghost face costume. So they ain't around with people whether they're playing or not. Meanwhile, this mother is out there in the ice cream section. <laughs> Cause I was gonna let him. I, I, I let some things slide with this man. It didn't work for me, but if y'all can, you know, if it works for y'all, that's fine. Yeah, sure. But I'm just like this. This this fool is popping up in some crazy places. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you taking a piss back there. I, you know, I, I, you know he, 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 he been there for a while. Yeah, Cause the other was like, God damn, I thought they never leave. <laughs> Sydney, I'm here. I, I, again, maybe it's just Wes Craven because it's like okay, because so often when you think of. 
John Carpenter's Halloween. Michael's always walking around the daytime, like behind bushes, just staring. He's like, hey, where'd you go? And then but he, it's then Halloween. He goes, but, but, yeah, but we, we're trying to be better than that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think it's him making fun of those scenes. But the, I think that's. I think those are supposed to be comedic. But if you're making fun of it, do it in a better way because this makes no sense. Mm-hmm. This my in the middle of the bushes in the daytime, like you're taking a shit. I mean, <laughs> that's why it's funny. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, it's yeah. funny. But I think it that's, that's it's, it's it's intentional. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm, I'm, I want to go with you, but <laughs> that's fine. I don't think I can. That's okay. I don't think I can with those two scenes. <laughs> no, man, I can't. That, that's, that's the fair. only I give it to I, the man. I was prepared for Corey to come up with somewhere. I go like, oh, come on, man. But yeah, yeah that was okay. Man, that's fair. Look. I, I, Chris, I gave you the bathroom, you all did. right? You did. I, I explained said, it. I explained I even, it. I even, I, I even, uh, uh, I'll praised, take the bathroom. I praised this scene right mm-hmm. here. Now I'm going to tell you, it don't make sense to me, but I praised it. I'll it's take a the well done scene. scene. I'll, con- you know, I'll take the bathroom scene and I'll concede the grocery store. Okay, and the let's do that. And the gazebo. <laughs> yeah. Because when you go shopping in your killer outfit, <laughs> I go I'm shopping. Yeah. Oh, that's great. No, man, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, we 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 gotta draw the line. That's fine. I'll draw, I'll draw that line. That's fine. Where, where's okay. the knives section? <laughs> Where are the knives? Where's cutlery? Yeah. <laughs> Sydney. Is this all you have? This has become such a pop culture icon of a movie that again is going to temper people's impact of it too when they see it because they've seen all the the references. Yep. Mm-hmm. But I mean, but even then, it's just a. It's a great film. It's well directed. It's well written. The acting is pretty good across the board. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's 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 a cut above um, <laughs> horror movies and every like, like I think about how much I don't like horror movies and then I mm-hmm. watch this and I go like well you're doing everything I wish all these other movies yeah. did yeah. where I you know it, I mean just the fact that the mystery of it works where you can't guess who yeah. the killer or killers are mm-hmm. and the characters all come to life where. You you feel them as realized people and, and feel something when they get killed. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Uh, and like I said, the movie just created some great quotables at the time. Kind of still hold up today. Like, uh, do you like scary movies? Mm-hmm. That voice, Roger L. Jackson. Roger name? L. Jackson. Yeah, that 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 voice, man. I uh, first time I heard it, I was like, oh, that voice is so perfect. The guy is still doing like the voice for people today. I almost want to go to Cameo and get him to do a read for me. Oh, he's on, he's cameo. on Cameo. Oh, makes sense, makes sense. Yeah, he's on Cameo doing reads for people. Hello, shit. What's your favorite scary movie? You going to make some popcorn and watch a scary The guy's like, man, this is just weird. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I don't like want this anymore. <laughs> I mean, uh, thank you, but... <laughs> do Mojo Jojo yeah, instead. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is him, right? That's him. That's okay. the same yeah. actor, yeah. yeah. And he's yeah, doing no. the voice in this new movie. He's come back to do it. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I love it, man. Love it. Yeah, people, if you haven't seen this in a while, go and watch it. Screen fun fact. Ooh. Hey, what up, DT Crew? It's your boy, C- Crown Clown. Crown Clown. <laughs> Just want to give you all a screen fun fact. In the scene in which Sydney jumps out of the closet and stabs Billy with the umbrella. Oh, yeah. That Nev Campbell mm-hmm. actually, um, let me see here. Oh, Nev Campbell actually missed Skeet Ulrich's protective vest on the second stab. Mm-hmm. So when you hear him scream the second time, <laughs> it is real and he is in pain. Yeah. That's the real one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, first stab, he didn't seem to mind so much. Like, oh, uh, oh, that shit hurt. Look at it. That <laughs> hurt. Uh, there's also that scene with uh, Matthew Lillard where he got hit with the phone. Oh, I, oh that love that. Yeah, that's improvised uh, from, phone. from Matthew oh, yeah. Lillard because he actually was hit by a phone. <laughs> <laughs> hit me with a phone, man, you <laughs> dick. Bitch, just like your mother. You've got to find me first, you pansy-ass mama's boy. Even the phone, Dick! <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Hey, everyone, support our Patreon, which helps us to continue bringing you our live streams, videos, and podcasts while bringing you new content, such as exclusive live streams and animated shorts. 